Welcome flip clock fans. We're looking at a Seiko DP690T flip clock alarm. The clock has a alarm button on the top, the selector being right on the front, and it has a whirly gig of sorts. We'll look at that a little more later. So the clock's smallish in size. It's got uh, nice colors. What does this say? 通電したまま時計の枠を外したり内部に手を触れることは絶対に避けてください。Translated Don't remove the frame of the watch or touch the inside while keeping the power on. So what you see is we have a clock here that was made in Japan for the Japanese market. And Japan is a country about the size of California with about three times the population of California. The Japanese electrical system is quite unusual in that the western part of the country runs at 60 hertz and the eastern part at 50 hertz, but all of the country runs at about 100 volts. And that's what this clock is rated for. It's rated for 100 volts. So we're going to look at that a little more later and talk about the implications. That's our time set knob there. You've got screws here. We'll have to undo two on the bottom, three on the back. And we'll take that knob off on the side there. We've taken the screws out, and it's just a simple matter of pulling out gently on the bottom and then unhooking it on the top. You can see the clock uses up all the available space in there. Now, that,、uh, we'll have to have that pushed down to get, to get the、uh, clock out. We'll、have to make sure that post doesn't catch on the side. We'll push the cord in and it'll come straight forward with a little finagling. And here it is out, and you're going to see that I'm going to be handling it like a hot potato because, like the warning said,、um, you got to be careful.、Um, you're not supposed to even have it on. Now, this alarm, we're going to take the, check the function of that alarm. So I've got the alarm set. And you saw it was at four o'clock. You can see I'm still trying to be careful. Let me turn that around to where it hits to four and watch what happens. There you go. Those two bars connected. Now we've removed them. And okay, so now it's not touching again. And then you'll see when it hits, the bar on the left will flip up, allowing these two bars to connect. And that's what's causing the sound. And just separating them stops them. So the vibration is actually always there. It's only when they're brought together that you can hear it.、And、the vibration is caused by this red、uh, device here that's a coil. It also powers the motor. Let's see, it hits right on. So it's efficient, but、uh, kind of、uh, primitive, really. I've got them too close together right now, but when you separate them a little, that、uh, makes the alarm sound. Well, look at here,、uh, here, you see that、uh, wheel going around there. That's part of the whirly gig situation. And you notice that's、uh, kind of separate from the motor, the、uh, rotor part of the motor. It、uh, spins around. And you see here, we've got the clock. It can set, be set to 60 or 50 hertz. Of course, in the United States, we'd set it to 60. And right now, that is flipped up for 60. What's happening is that middle gear that's coming off the motor after it's already been geared down、uh, is spinning, and you select one of, the, one of the gears here, and you see the, in the middle gear there, that's what's going to contact the rest of the clock. But that gear train there, whichever one you select, is going to impact here. And the gears are designed so that the speed of rotation of the motor, which is synchronous and matches the electricity, will impart the right speed. So you see each tick here on this gear. It's going to mean one minute. That's pretty, pretty cool how it's done. It's fairly simple. And I see that little notch there. Watch, watch when it gets around here. It's going to move this little wheel, which is going to flip the hour. This is different than most copals.、So、you can see the wheel goes around, it does the minutes, and then there's that little notch that's going to turn the, turn the hour. It's kind of neat. Definitely different. So, we're looking at this, and the question is well, is it, does it matter? It's rated for 100 volts. What if we run it at、uh, United States voltage, which is、uh, 120? Well, we've got this 
um, converter here. It's actually a Japanese converter for people who are coming to the United States or another country who's running uh, higher voltage than the Japan electronics are rated for. And we see that it'll accept an input of between 110 and 130 at either 50 or 60 hertz, an output 100 volts up to a 35 watt maximum. So we're going to test it and see what it does here. So the current that's coming in here to Flip Clock Fan Studios is nominally 120, but you'll see a slight uh, fluctuation, which isn't that abnormal. Once I get the connection, we're running from about 117, 119, a uh, little variability there. We plug in our transformer here. And once we get the, the, the leads in here, get it connected, you're seeing that we're running from about 102 to 104 volts. Well, the bottom line is it's a pretty basic situation. It's just a coil, and I don't think it's going to make any difference. Most people who restore these clocks say it doesn't, and I'm inclined to believe that you really don't need the converter. I don't think it's going to make that much difference. Now, if you had something a little more um, complicated with capacitors, resistors that were rated for 100 volts, I'd say so. But um, and anyway... We're going to put this back. You can see it's just a little bit of uh, work in it to get it all pieced in. We'll put the screws back in. And nice little compact clock. Now you notice it's kind of basic. It doesn't even have AM or PM. It's just straight 12 hours. So I have to remember to turn that alarm off. So there it is, the Seiko DP690T. Nice looking little clock. And we've learned something today. 通電したまま時計の枠を外したり内部に手を触れることは絶対に避けてください When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com